Montia. She's an Emmy Award winning reporter and producer. She's hosted shows like American Latino TV and Te Para Tres Con Pili Montia. Uh, she's also hosted LA TV's In La Zona and En Concierto. She was nominated for a Tecla Award for Best Stories or Live Content at Hispanicize 2018. Pili's here today to discuss her career, her journey from her homeland from Puerto Rico to the mainland here in the United States the work she's been doing to help the island recover from the devastation of Hurricane Maria. Pilly, how are you? I'm here. Here you are. There you, how are you doing? Thanks for coming on. Now, Emmy Award winning, what, what did you, I, when I hear Emmy Award winning, my eyes perk up. What did you win an Emmy Award for? I won for my show, um, Te Para Tres, with Pili Montilla. It was a show that I created, hosted, and produced on Latin alternative musicians. It was a beautiful show, and it, it ran for three years, wow. so we were nominated for Emmys. Wow, and then that's ended amazing. Up. Actually, you can see the, where is it? The yes, Emmy, right? I see. Oh, what? I see a poster. There you are. Oh, I see it right on the right on the back. Very, very <laughs> nice. So you started off your career after school, after you came here from Puerto Rico. You started as a VJ for MTV. That's kind of cool. Did, did you so have to go I, on like a million auditions? How did you get that? I did. You're right. I yeah, did yeah, have to right. You to had like, to, right? Yeah. My mom was the one that told me, you know, they're looking for VJs for MTV, and I totally see you doing that. And I'm like, right. oh, yeah, let's, yeah, let's do that. I like that. So I went through a tedious, long process of auditions, and after like my sixth audition, I actually didn't get it. I was the second runner-up. They picked another girl, but three months later, they called me and said, you know what, it's not working with this girl, we want you. And so I worked with MTV for three years, and it worked out great. It was such a great school. That's where I learned how to produce, how to translate from English to Spanish, Spanish to English how to interview, how to do my research. It was awesome. So so who are some cool people you met during um, during your years at MTV? I love Gwen Stefani, and I got to interview her while I was working for MTV, she, which was awesome. She was awesome. cool. She was nice, I assume. She was super sweet, right. super nice. Right. I've also interviewed Sandra Bullock, Ricky Martin, Shakira, Sofia Vergara. I love human connection. I love talking to people. Um, that's why I love interviewing and, and being a TV host, because I get to connect, to like deeply connect with someone. Now, now, you were at MTV for three years, and you also had an acting career as well. Is that right? I, I saw, I read in my notes here, you work with Lynn manuel Miranda. How is it working with him? What, what did you do with him? So we were shooting a movie in Puerto Rico called Doscientas Cartas. Uh -huh. You know, he's a genius. Everything you see about and read about Lee Manuel Miranda, that's good, is is actually true. I've never met him personally, but he's like, if you if you put like, give me a list of like 10 or 20 people, like, you know, famous showbiz people I would want to meet, because I think they would be fun and cool to hang out with. He was, he's on my list. Absolutely on totally. my list. Yeah. He's a genius. Yeah. Like, and everything he touches now turns right. into gold. Yeah, so. of course. Yeah, that's also another reason to hang out with him. <laughs> now, you're originally from Puerto Rico. Is that correct? You were born in Puerto Rico? Born and raised in Puerto Rico. My family is still there. Uh -huh. Yep. So I'm, I don't know if you can see my shirt, but I'm a, I'm a Boricua. Uh-huh. And what does that mean for those who don't speak Spanish? So Boricua is a, a term that is used for Puerto Ricans because before... Um, we were named Puerto Rico. It was called Boriquen by the Tainos, who are, right. who are the native right. of Puerto Rico. It was Boriquen, so you're a Boricua if you're Puerto Rican. Got it, got it. So now your family's been there for how long? Generations, I guess, right? Oh, God, yes. Generations and generations, except for my grandfather on my mom's side. He's Irish-American. How were you, you know, looked upon when you first came when you were 17 years old, how were you looked upon? I mean, how was your English? Did people look at you as like a foreigner? You know, because, you know, a lot of people who come from Central America, South America, you know, they get kind of clumped in with Puerto Ricans a lot, you know? Till this day, I always have to justify where I'm from because nobody really believes that I'm Puerto Rican. So I constantly have to say, yes, I'm Puerto Rican. What? But you don't look Puerto Rican. And I always say the same thing. Well, we don't all look like J-Lo, you know? <laughs> Puerto Ricans, just like any Latina, right. we come in all different shapes, colors, and sizes, and that's the beauty of, of the world in general. I faced, I don't want to say racism, because I hate overusing that word, but some resistance from both Latinos and both Americans, because, like, nobody can pigeonhole me. You know, like, Americans are like, well, you look like us, but uh, you don't move like us because right. you talk a lot with your hands and you have a slight accent and your name is Pili Montilla. 
Um, right. Pilly, and, Pilly and the, gives it away, but other than that, you know, exactly, yeah. Exactly. Uh, and, and the Latinos are like, oh, but, you know, you must have certain privileges that we don't have, or you probably have it better than we have, when it's not the truth. It irritates me, and at the same time, it is what it is, so, now, I, you know, got to move on. So, now, in, in the United States, you can vote, right? You can vote in California for the president. Right. So right, but if, if you, you lived, lived in, in, if you lived in Puerto Rico, you can't. Why don't you explain to everybody that? Because people, I don't think, get it. Thank you. Yeah, let's explain a couple of things. Yeah. First of all, Puerto Rico, we're American, so we have a U.S. passport. And also the currency is the American dollar. But let's go back to the passport just one more second, because I get this all the time. There isn't such a thing as Puerto Rican citizenship, or there isn't such a thing as a Puerto Rican passport. We are Americans born on an island that's a commonwealth of the United States of America. Something that we didn't choose, something that was forced upon. Yeah, right. After the Spanish-American War in 1898, um, the you know, United States Took conquered us. Right. Yeah. So it's not something that we chose. <laughs> we did not choose to be part of the United States. It just, Happened. that's how history ends up being. Yes, exactly. So, um, we, if you live on the island, you cannot vote for the United States governor or vice president or, I mean, president or vice president. Right. Like you, cannot. you can right. vote for your governor in Puerto Rico, but you cannot vote for anything that's going on on the mainland, even though the mainland is the one taking all of the actions and passing all the laws that relate to you and your people and, and your island. And you have no congressman or congresswoman. You have no senator, nobody in Congress. We have one non-voting, I don't think it's even a co congressman, it's a, it's a representative, but he can't vote. Right, he He's has just no power. He just sits there and stares no at everybody, right. Correct. Now that I moved to the mainland, I can vote and I do exercise my right to vote. I read something interesting that after the hurricane, a lot of, a lot of people who lived in Puerto Rico had to leave because they didn't have electricity, they didn't have food, yeah. and, they, and a lot moved to Florida. Yes, that is correct. Thousands and thousands of Puerto Ricans fled the island after the hurricane, including my parents. And that's because my dad is 75 years old. His health is very delicate. And we had to take my dad off the island two days after the hurricane, send him to my sister's house, who lives in Florida. And my mom and my dad were without power for five months. So what's your take on everything that happened in Puerto Rico with, you know, Donald Trump throwing, you know, bounty paper it's towels? Out paper towels at people, to everything's great in Puerto Rico, to people still don't have electricity, to Donald Trump saying nobody, you know, very few people die, to now this, you know, Harvard study said over 5,000 people, I believe, died in Puerto Rico. Tell me what your whole take on this whole hurricane, you know, as a Puerto Rican, as somebody who, who has a stake in that island. You grew up there, you have family there. So tell me a little bit about your right. thoughts. It's devastating. It's frustrating. It's extremely sad. Um, you know, it really does break my heart to see what's happening on the island. Have you been there? Sure. Have you seen? Tell us what you've seen. Yes. So I was there at the end of January. <sighs> Everything's abandoned. Everything's broken. Um, there's huge holes on the street. People's, what affected me the most was how people are trying to deal with it. Like people are frustrated, people are tired. People are desperate. Our crime rate has gone up and I don't, you know, I don't blame them. People have to survive. I just saw total devastation. Um, you know, buildings that I grew up looking at, that I grew up in, um, were, are not there anymore, are in ruins. But most importantly, it's people's reaction to it. Uh, people are heartbroken. People feel abandoned. People feel betrayed and, and because we don't have the help that we should be getting. If you don't have power, you don't have water. Like, how do you serve? You don't have work. That's why so many people uh -huh. died. That's why so many people died. It wasn't the and winds. So it was. It was. It was the lack of services after. All I can do is, you know. I'm a board member of a non-for-profit called Friends of Puerto Rico so and tell, try to tell help me what, the island. I was about to ask you, I know you're, I know you're part of a non-for-profit. Tell us, tell us a little bit about this and tell us what you're doing to try to help the island. Friends of Puerto Rico had been going on, you know, it was founded about four years ago. We focus on, what, on, on what's called the orange economy, which is arts, culture, and education. So we help artists that are on the island. So those of us that have left in the diaspora and are on the mainland, 
helping those that have stayed in Puerto Rico in education, arts, and culture. So we, we help a lot of independent art musicians and artists. We give a lot of scholarships. We've helped 13 Boys and Girls Club that were devastated by Hurricane Maria. We gave them food for over three months every day to the boys and girls and to the, to the staff members. We gave generators to, um, to the Boys and Girls Club as well. Nice. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a little bit of everything that has to do with that, with that economy. We've been lucky enough to have a community of amazing supporters that we've raised over a million dollars through Facebook. Um, so for more information, please do visit and follow friendsofpuertorico.org. I'm extremely proud of the work that we're doing. And, and, and from, that, from that website, you can make a donation? You can make a donation, and you can also see what we're doing, that's, all the efforts that we're doing, and where your money's going. That's wonderful. That's wonderful work. So, Pilly, before I before we leave, where can people go uh, on on the web or social media to go find you and find out more about you? Yes, I would love for people to start following yeah. me and follow my journey. It's at Pili Montilla, so it's P I L I M O N T I L L A. You can see it there on the lower third. So yes, it's at Pili Montilla on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm most active on Instagram, so please direct message me. I do answer all of my posts. It might take me a little longer, but I do answer all of them, and I love connecting with my audience and hopefully with your audience as well. Pili, it's amazing. Thanks for coming on Bradshaw Live. Got it. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.